When I designed the Q2 at the end of 2022, I felt pretty confident that the weight of the very large and presumably very heavy locomotive would keep the unconnected sets of powered drivers in sync. I had built plenty of locomotives with disconnected power trucks, albeit diesels on wheels with tires in identical or symmetric bogies, and never had a problem with synchronization or wheel slip. I noticed a little bit of desync with the prototype chassis, but it actually got worse with the heavier completed model, almost certainly because the rear drivers carry more weight on more axles. I wanted to see if the desync affected performance by slowing the speed of the front drivers until they matched that of the rear drivers. To do this, I needed fine grained control over each motor and a readout of each motor's speed, both impossible with power functions. I knew that some powered up and control plus motors had encoders, but I did not know which ones and I did not know if I could easily read them. After some digging, I found, of course, not from Lego, that the PU app can read said encoders and that any cross-shaped motor has them. This includes everything but the WeDo 2.0 motor and the train motor, uh, surprising given the exorbitant price of the former. So I made a controller that could independently control two motors and display their speeds. I wanted to run both motors at full power, observe the front drivers spinning faster, and slow them to match speeds with the rear set. Then I would see if this adjustment had any noticeable effect on performance. Unfortunately, when I started the test, both sets of drivers reported almost the same speed, and I could verify this visually as well. I suspect that somewhere along the way, either in the hardware or the software, the encoded motors try to regulate output speed on their own. This could explain why a Lieber 9800 drives straight, whereas an app-controlled Batmobile does not. Very subjectively, the front drivers also seem to slip less with unencoded We Do 2 motors than with unencoded PFL motors. I can also try to manually sync that configuration in software as well. Thus, I can't run the experiment that I wanted to run, but I can sync the drivers electronically if I use powered up and encoded motors. That still doesn't help performance though. The Control Plus L motors run much slower than PFL motors, and it shows. This configuration could complete an R104 test circuit with eight straights aside in about 16 seconds, whereas the 5AT could complete the same lap in just 10. At this point, I wanted to measure the actual performance delta between the Q2 and the 5AT under the same conditions. The previous test used the same track length, but not the same load or the same motors. Using Power Function's large motors, the slightly faster fake ones, and pulling the same load, two bearing axle cars, the Q2 could actually lap the test track in 10 seconds as well. Apparently, 
I had been wrong on the performance aspect all along. Under the same conditions, the Q2 could go just as fast as the 5AT, regardless of driver desync. And I might not have realized it due to the massive size differential or some other confounding visual factor. It seems like I have two options overall. Go fast with power functions or have synced drivers with powered up. But what if I use different PF motors for the front and back drivers? I ran two more tests, one with an L motor in the back and an M motor in the front and another with a faster fake L in the back and a slower real L in the front. Neither configuration eliminated driver desync entirely, but the second one did better than the first. Furthermore, both configurations exhibited different amounts of slip at different speeds due to the unique power curves of the respective motors. I also did a train pull to measure the tractive effort. The 887 gram Q2 pulled 220 grams reliably, but struggled to do 240 grams. This gives a net coefficient of friction of 0.25, a bit better than the 5AT which also ran with no tires, but probably carried more weight on the unpowered front bogey. I pulled in reverse to try to put more weight on the front drivers, but it seems to tip the scale too much in that direction. Finally, I did a second pull using our experimental static testing method where we lift too much weight off a scale and measure the loss. This methodology takes less space and time, but we suspect it may overstate pulling strength since the locomotive does not have to move. In this case, we got the same 240 grams. So on that note, this is the end of the video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do, and have a nice day.